Thank you very much, Abhishek, uh, to give an insight what's happening in Nepal. Um, so you also also mentioned like what are the there are like very few companies doing retrofitting uh, or activities in Nepal. Uh, yeah. Of course, there are the challenges that you mentioned, uh, standards, policy, and time frame, and so forth. Uh, but how do you see how could we enhance this retrofitting activities? Uh, is that like um, how do you see how how we can how we can enhance uh, the retrofitting in Nepal? Uh, despite uh, there are the um, policy lagging and uh, standards, uh, but still uh, we are we are advocating for the policy in Nepal that we are pressuring the government, and um, we, we need to continue this uh, legacy of retrofitting so that we can pressurize the government that is still physical for. Uh, retrofitting in Nepal, as well as uh, it's a cost effective, uh, a cost benefit, as Imus has already presented a uh, total cost ownership that was uh, uh, practiced in India. And in India and Nepal, the, 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 the tissue is uh, quite similar. And we can present this kind of data to the government and pressure the government uh, to, to make the environment friendly policy for uh, retrofitting the vehicles in Nepal. And maybe in the future, we, we are hoping that uh, in the past budget, uh, the government has already mentioned for uh, retrofitting the vehicles by next 10 years, uh, the, uh, retrofitting the old vehicles. And maybe uh, those uh, policy will be implemented very soon in Nepal. Uh, so the, the latest question that Bhushan faced, the, how, how are the standards for retrofitting in Nepal? Uh, sorry, sorry, in India. Uh, do you think they are adequate? Um, I think at, at this point of time, there is not very clear policy from um, the government on retrofitting. Uh, I think most of the um, policy or the subsidies uh, and regulation is all uh, driven towards um, new new, new buses or new electric buses or trucks. Uh, so there, there needs to be a more defined um, uh, you know standard and policy for sure I, I think it's it is not adequate at this point of time do do do, do industries like yours get some incentives or there are none from the national or local government no not at this point so there is a uh, there is a, a large program in india called fame f a m e mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, they're trying to faster adoption of electric vehicles uh, but this is all driven towards uh, new uh, vehicles and for, for OEMs. So, for example, the government would provide um, a certain amount of subsidy directly to the end consumer for buying uh, an electric vehicle, whether it's a passenger car or whether it's a bus or a truck. Uh, but there is no uh, clear policy or standard for retrofitting at this point of time. So most of these costs are uh, borne by the end customer. Yeah, so yeah, we definitely need some policies to uh, to retrofit vehicles, uh, besides giving incentives for buying the new new electric vehicle, of course. So I I mean I think you have touched upon this a little bit, but can you just a little bit explain how to determine when the vehicle needs to be or can be retrofitted? I mean, of course, the age of the vehicle is always there, uh, but some other consideration. So okay, this vehicle of although if it's like 20 years or 15 years uh what is the basic uh like determine yeah. determining uh, con uh consideration for retrofitting i mean uh, when we actually talk about heavier commercial vehicles buses and trucks we are not really looking for vehicles which are say 15 20 years old because a lot of the um the, the base of these vehicles is not um how would you say is not sufficient or is not adequate for uh, retrofitting or conversion into electric and then still running safely. So one of the first things that we would do is um, have, say, a 100-point checklist to go through a vehicle when we first get it into our hands to say, is this structurally sound? Is the is the chassis having a good integrity? Uh, are all is From a safety point of view, uh, are, are, the, are things all the way they should be? Uh, or if it's a, even a five, six, seven year old vehicle, uh, you're going to have uh, some some challenges with say the suspension or the brakes or other things like that. So we would 
first of all, make sure that these are corrected uh, and these are fixed and brought up to the best standards. And then we actually go into the retrofitting of the power train or the drive line itself. So I think the structural integrity of the chassis is also very important. Um, one of the things that we found uh, while we were doing a few of these uh, Indian projects is that when we're looking for much older vehicles, uh, the way the, elect the the way the software has been written, say ten years ago, on these vehicles, uh, the way the you know the communication happens between the different components, or let's say the speedometer uh, and the, uh, the, the 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 main control unit of the vehicle, it's it's very it's quite old, uh, and it's uh, many a times not compatible with some of the components or some of the electronics that we are uh, choosing to use. So we have to be you know, we have to be aware of certain uh, things before we go too far back. So I think these are some of the some of the um, uh, things that we look at initially. Thanks, thanks, Karan. Um, maybe I'll put the last question. Uh, I think uh, Doc Mani is also there. Uh, so, so how 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 is retrofitting a bus or or mini bus different from a car or light duty vehicle? Uh, from the experience in India, from the experience in Philippines. So is uh, retrofitting mm -hmm. a small vehicle easier or difficult, like uh, a, a bigger vehicle difficult? Uh, either if you would like to share your thoughts on that. Uh, maybe I can, uh, I can only talk about the commercial vehicles because that's what we work in, but I think we have, um, I think in a, in a typical truck, uh, we have, the good advantage of space sometimes because we have a lot of space to have enough of these battery packs and all of these things uh, all the components to fit there uh, but then there are also the challenges on um, because they're heavier vehicles how much range can we get out of them uh, is the battery pack uh, there, there's a certain level where you can keep adding batteries to a vehicle before it starts getting so heavy that it's actually eating into the range itself or it's eating into the payload of the vehicle so we have to have a very careful balance there I think that the way we design motors or transmissions or the electric motors, I mean, for trucks is very different from uh, how we would do it for cars. So I think we are in a slightly different uh, uh, area altogether. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Karan. Uh, Doc Mani, would you like, also like to respond on this, how retrofitting differs uh, based on the, uh, the vehicle type? Or maybe Abhishek, uh, would you like, also like to respond to this? Sorry, I, sorry, I missed the question. Which which one? Ah, uh, so the the question from Bhushan was, uh, uh, so how the retrofitting of uh, like bus or mini bus of different uh, forms of car or light duty vehicle. So how is retrofitting uh, is is retrofitting easier for the smaller vehicle, or it is a bit complicated for of course uh, for the bigger ones. Uh, we, how we is have retrofitting differs? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can uh, have a look from the different uh, aspect of the technologies. At first, for the smaller and the light duty vehicle, the component size will be smaller and the, the weight will be much uh, smaller than compared to that of the, the heavy vehicles. And, and the design of this uh, placement of those components will be easier for light duty vehicle than the heavier vehicle. And, and also the, and also the like, uh, 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 testing of the vehicles before uh, before the conversion, on uh, because like scanning the smaller vehicle, uh, small vehicle are much easier than that of heavy heavy duty vehicles. Uh, and also, 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 the, also to balance to balance the CG of the vehicle, the smaller vehicles are much easier than heavy vehicles. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I would just like to open the floor to the to the participants. So if you want to pose a questions uh, or you want to speak, your, uh, 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 then you can also speak. Uh, is there someone who wants to uh, pose a question? There was one 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 comment from Bhushan. Uh, to Karan. Uh, so I hear Kerala government has some policies or incentive to promote retrofit. Is that so or how are these policies? Is just for the Kerala or it has not been uh, for other states? No, I, I, to be honest, I am not really aware of such a policy. It, 
um, need to look at this. I, I have not heard of it, at least in this part of the country.